Greetings Earthlings. Today we're going to go over an introduction to Venn diagrams and focus specifically on the question of how many numbers between 1 and 1000 inclusive are divisible by 2, 3, or 5. So let's jump right in. Now also at many points in this video I highly recommend that you guys pause the video and try to figure things out for yourself before I kind of give you guys the answer. So with that said, we're not ready. If you've never seen this problem, I wouldn't advise you just jump right into this question. So what we're going to do is do a baby problem and that is a great strategy. Whenever you feel really overwhelmed or confused by a problem, create an easier version and start there. So we're just going to play around with the problem. Let's create a similar problem. So we're just going to say how many numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive are divisible by 2 or 3. So I'm just going to say 2's and 3's so I don't have to keep saying divisible. So when, when you see 2's and 3's just assume that's what that means. Alright, so well we can organize our work and remember the theme in these videos is organization. So we could say how many numbers are divisible by 2? Well there are 5 of them, we can even list them out. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. We can see how many numbers are divisible by 3. There's 3 of them and those are 3, 6, and 9. So, and then we might say, hey, okay, so there's five of those, there's three of these, let's add them up and get eight. Except that would be wrong, because if we actually go and list the numbers out, we'll get two, three, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Now, if you stare at this for a second, you'll quickly realize why is there a discrepancy between eight over here and the seven over here, because we've counted the six twice as part of the twos and as part of the threes. So what we really should be doing is counting the twos, counting the threes, and then subtracting the overlap, which are how many sixes, and there's one six. So eight minus one indeed gets us seven, which there are seven numbers over here. So that baby problem suggests that maybe if we could organize our work in a more visually appealing way, this might help us. And so enter the Venn diagram. Now, what is the Venn diagram? It's nothing more but a nice little visualization to help us keep track of our work. So that's what I've drawn here. So the left circle is going to be the twos, the numbers that are divisible by twos, how many numbers, and then the right circle is the numbers divisible by threes. So I, I put a five right outside here to indicate that the size of the circle, there are five numbers. And the size of that circle, there are three numbers. And that, those, that five and three are precisely these five and three that we just got over here. And then the overlap is how many numbers are, divis are part of the twos and the threes. So that would be the sixes. And there's one of those because there's a six between one and ten and nothing else. Now, once you've filled out this one, you could figure out that five minus one is four. So you could put a four in here and then you could do a three minus one and get a two and put a two in here. So you, all together you would have 4 plus 1 plus 2 and that would give you 7 as well. Now let me g give you guys a quick notes, a uh, quick few notes So for a, like almost any Venn diagram questions. So first of all, this question deals with divisibility in 2s, 3s, and 5s, but oftentimes you'll find other Venn diagram questions and some favorites that people like to use are sports, musical instruments, or languages. So for sports it might be 30 students play soccer, 50 play basketball, 20 play whatever, and, and then you have all sorts of information. So then in that case, your circles would represent how many students play each of those sports. And then you have instruments, so maybe 10 students play piano, 12 play the violin, whatever, whatever. So um, languages could be this many students take Spanish, French, Chinese, Russian, Italian, whatever. So that, that's just, so if you see those, just know that those are, can also are very common Venn diagram questions. Number two, uh, a little like kind of trap or trick people like to throw in there is maybe some of the students play neither or do neither of them. So in our case, I made this really tiny, so I don't know if you guys can see it, but this just has our numbers broken out. So this is 412, the same 412 from over here. And perhaps you're given that um, three, so in other words, in our original example from one to 10, since there are seven numbers that are divisible by two or three, 10 minus 7 is 3. So 3 would mean that 3 numbers are divisible by neither 2 nor 3. And this box, this rectangle represents our entire universe of possibilities. So you could be in one of these circles or outside of them. So just know that if you're given information such as neither, that you could put that outside in like a rectangle like that. Alright, next. Number 3. 
Uh, oftentimes in these problems, a very good strategy, not all the time, but very frequently if you're given a lot of information, is to start labeling things from the center. So if, for example, as you could see here, we didn't know what this region was, but we did know, in this region, by the way, where would represent twos only. So that would be like two and four and eight and 10, but not six, whereas this includes the six. So if you're given information, you're not sure where to start, what to start labeling, I usually recommend start from the center. All right, and now these are gonna be like the really, really important points. So number four, if you wanna use Venn diagrams, you have to be really comfortable understand what do they mean. So let's just review very quickly. This region right here on the left represents twos only. In other words, you cannot be a three. So a, since a six is divisible by three, a six is not included in this left region. Now the middle region represents twos and threes and the right region represents threes only. So it's very important that you pay attention to those English words. So that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So make sure you understand the meaning and if we're outside, then it would be neither two nor three. All right, number five. Typically when you see these Venn diagram problems, there are two types of approaches, forwards and backwards. So what would be a forwards approach? A forwards approach would be to sum actually all the individual regions. So in our case, that would be four plus one plus two, if we happen to have those numbers. Now, we don't have those numbers in our original problem, so I probably would not use a forwards approach. Or you could use a backwards approach where you kind of do a, a crude estimation. You just add the circle, so circle plus circle, so that would be, in our case, five plus three, because there are five numbers divisible by two, three numbers divisible by three, and then that middle region would be a one. So it would be five plus three minus one. So that would be the backwards approach. Uh, it depends on the problem. So sometimes you wanna use forwards approaches, sometimes backwards. It depends what information you're starting out with. In, in our original problem that we're gonna do in this video, I'm probably going to use a backwards approach because I think that would be a little faster but you guys can try it the other way as well. All right, so also let me just throw in a quick little thing. So let's say we have, this is, we have Spanish and French, and let's say this circle has 40 students and this circle has 50 students. You might be asked, what is the maximum possible number of students? Also, you guys can't see that. All right, here we go. Let's say this circle is Spanish, this circle is French, 40 students take Spanish, 50 students take French. The question might ask, what is the maximum number of students that take one of the two languages? And the answer would be 90 because you would just add 40 and 50 because in that case, you could just put zero over here. Maybe none of them take both. But what's the other extreme? What's the, minimal, what's the minimum number of students that there might be, assuming everybody takes either Spanish or French? Well, this could be all the way up to 40 it can't be more than 40 because the entire circle here is 40. So the middle can range anywhere from zero to 40 and because 40 is the smaller of these two circles. So in that case, if, this, if all the students take, if all 40 of these also take French, then we almost only have 50 students total. And how did I get that? 40 plus 50 minus the overlap of 40. So that gets us back to 50. So that's just a kind of a typical problem. So you want to have a sense by looking at the numbers, what is a reasonable number? By the way, sometimes when you create these problems by yourself and just throw in whatever random numbers, as I've done in the past with students, occasionally you'll get negative numbers for regions and that just means you didn't design the problem well. So don't freak out if that happens, that just means it's not a well-designed problem. All right, now let's go to our actual question. So now we have twos, threes, and fives, so we're gonna have three circles. So what are our three circles. We have our two circle, three circles, and five circle. Now, I've do, I'm not even going to put numbers in here, but this is to help guide your understanding of what we're doing in this table. So, first I'm going to see how many numbers are divisible by, by two, from one to one thousand, inclusive of one and one thousand. By the way, when you get these problems, you should, you know, you should be sure you're answering the right question. Uh, you, because if you don't include the bounds, or you're not sure whether it includes it, you might be off by one or two. So now, 
there are 500 numbers from 1 to 1,000 divisible by 2. So the way I'm going to get all these numbers is basically dividing 1,000 by whatever we're going to get here. So 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. There are 333 numbers divisible by 3. That's 1 through 999. And I think most of you guys can follow. If you can't follow, please let me know in the comments. So there are 200 numbers divisible by 5. Uh, 2 and 3 means these are 6s. So 1,000 divided by 6, rounded to the nearest Sorry, not to the nearest, but uh, rounded down because we don't want to include the, include the fractional part, will get us 166. The actual answer is 166 and two thirds, but like I said, we, want, we don't want to exceed 1,000, so uh, we, we're going only integers, so we cut off the two thirds. So that's 166. Two and five, 1,000 divided by 10 is 100. 1,000 divided by 15, rounded down is 66. And 1,000 divided by two times three times five, which is 30 would be 33. So now the question is, what do we do with all these numbers? That's really the tricky part. So, and that's where this Venn diagram will be super duper helpful. So our first idea might be, well, let's just add the twos, threes, and fives. And that's like adding these three circles. But as you guys can tell, that will create overlap. So for example, this region right here, which we can label, let's say this is gonna be uh, region A, B, C, and D. So region A is going to be counted twice because it's part of circle two and circle three. So that's why we're going to, in here, I just circled the regions we want to add and subtract. So we're going to add the two, we're going to add the three, we're going to add the five, then we're going to subtract the two and three or the sixth region. And that's going to chop off that extra A. We're going to chop, same thing for all the other things. We don't want to count two and five twice. So we're going to subtract this region we're going to subtract three and five. And now at this point, here's where it gets really tricky because now we're, we have to think what happens to region C? How many times do we have, we counted it so far? So when we added up circles two, the twos, threes, and fives, we, we basically got three C's because C is part of all three circles. Now, when we subtracted off each of these pairs, each of them also includes C. So we basically counted C three times and then subtracted it three times. So three minus three gets a zero, which means we've never even counted C. So now that's why we have to add the two, three, and five region, which is region C. That's why we have to add it back in. So the sum of the first three numbers is 1,033. The sum of the next three, which we're gonna subtract, is 332. And then we add in that 33 and we get 734. So that's how you do this problem. Now, by the way, let me know in the questions if, I, if this was a little too fast or if you guys have any questions or any specific nuances that you may have missed. Now, variations. So this is a fairly typical problem. So I, I think to help your understanding, let's try a few variations. So let's say same question, we're going one through a thousand. And now instead of two, three, and five, we're gonna do four, five, and six. So you may think, well, that's the same question. Who really cares? But there's a little bit of a nuance here, and that's why I threw this in. I actually don't even care about doing these so much, I care about getting you guys to think about these. So what's special about these? Well, let's think about two, three, and five. Two, three, and five were relatively prime. So in other words, they had no nothing in common in terms of greatest common factors from each pair other than one. So two and three have no factors, three and five have no factors, two and five have no factors. But four and six do. So when you're doing your list, and you're getting your numbers, you're gonna do you know, four only, I mean, just all of four, all of five, all of six, four and five, four and six, but then when you do four and six, you don't want to think of this as a 24 because the least common multiple of four and six is not 24, but it's 12. So that's the nuance. If you treat a four and six as a 24, you're gonna get it wrong. All right, next variation, four, six, and eight. So if we have four, six, and eight, you might think, okay, that's just another regular three Venn diagram problem. But notice that the eight and four are very re intimately related. So not only is the four and the six related, and we have to watch out for this 12 business, but if a number is divisible by eight, it's automatically divisible by four. So basically what we're saying is we don't even have to count the eights because when we count the fours, that will include the eights. So this problem will reduce to four and six. So the lesson here is don't just use this technique blindly, but see if you can simplify 
approach each set, uh, situation as they say kind of in like Buddhism or Taoism with a very like a beginner mindset, like a fresh mindset. So don't assume this is a, just copy and paste of whatever procedure you've just learned because we've just made our lives much easier and simplified it. All right, part C. So part C, what if you have four of them? So this looks really intimidating, two, three, four, and five, but using the previous part, we know that we don't even have to consider the four because the twos are gonna hit the fours. So this just reduces to our regular three Venn diagram question of twos, threes, and fives. Now, the last part. What about numbers from one to 1,000 inclusive that are divisible by either three, four, five, or seven? Now, in this one, no pair of them is related so this is actually a very hard problem. And in this one, we indeed do have to consider four sets. Now, I really wanna encourage you guys to try it yourself. It's okay if you can't get it, I'll be honest, I probably couldn't do this myself in five minutes. But it'll, it will help your understanding because you might appreciate some of the challenges. Now, make sure, after attempting it yourself, I really encourage you guys to look at the links in the description. I've put in a few links to help your understanding and give you guys some cool ideas and some, you know, share some knowledge with you guys. Links to some, a few articles, videos, great stuff. All right, now, uh, something to keep in mind. So my first idea in doing this might be, and this is maybe your idea, let's just draw four circles because it's four Venn diagrams. I mean, Venn diagram made up of four circles, except there is a problem because if you count the number of regions, you're gonna find that there we haven't actually considered all the cases so what do i mean this is a little bit beyond the scope of this video but in one of the links in the description they do go into this so let's go back to this one if we count the number of regions over here we have one two three four five six seven plus the numbers that are neither two three nor five so that's an eighth region outside so for three circles that's Gonna eight, how is a three and an eight related? Well, an eight is two cubed. So whatever your number of circles is, you're going to raise two to that power. So notice for here we had one, two, three, plus the numbers outside. So that's four regions and they're two circles. So two squared is four, two cubed is eight. And since there are four sets here, we should have two to the fourth. Now I'm not proving that assertion, but you guys should ex explore that in the links. So in other words, two to the fourth power is 16 regions. If you try to draw four circles, you will find that you cannot create 16 regions unless you draw things that are not circles. So there are ways to draw this, but I encourage you guys to mess around and try to figure that out for yourselves. So the point of this is not so much to solve it, but to make you appreciate the kind of the challenges of keeping track of which regions we have counted, which regions we haven't counted, and like which regions we should count, like should we count, add it in, subtract it off two times, three times, whatever. All right, I'll say one more thing. In this challenge problem, if you find this very interesting and fascinating in, in terms of the extension of four sets and higher, I recommend you check out two branches of mathematics in particular, which would be topology and graph theory. Those deal a lot with shapes in the plane and not just in the plane but any dimensions and problems exactly such as this getting the, like a lot of regions uh basically it's very cool so if you like this check out graph theory and topology all right i'll see you guys in the next video